Keeping computers cool has been something of an obsession of mine since I first got into computers long, long ago. So today we're going to be looking at a couple of different thermal compounds and see how they compare. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you had some time over the holidays to enjoy, relax, and do the things that you love. So in building my home server and rendering machine, I wanted to try to find the best thermal paste for air cooling. We all know that there's a lot of good thermal paste out there and a lot of not so good thermal pastes, but they all kind of do the same thing. So today I wanted to look at a couple different thermal pastes. Uh, looking at Thermalrite TFX, which is one of my personal favorites that I enjoy using, and I've pretty much used standard on any of my performance builds. We'll be looking at the Noctua NTH1, which came with the Noctua NHD15S heatsink that I'm using on the server build. We're also going to be looking at the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which is kind of the fan favorite. All of the review sites talk about it being number one when it comes to non-thermally conductive thermal pastes. We're also going to be looking at one of my mainstays, the Arctic MX4, which is something that I've been using for well over 15 years in computer builds as kind of a standard. It's kind of your workhorse thermal paste that can be used on just about any application, but I really wanted to see how it stacked up against the competition. And finally, I believe last year sometime, Arctic released their MX-5 thermal compound, which I wanted to take a look at and actually do some comparisons with to see if it is an improvement over the MX-4 and if it's worth moving to as my mainstay thermal paste. So to do the comparison, I'm going to be using a 5900X CPU that's got the power limits unlocked by about 20% extra. That's going to add a little bit more thermal load so that we can really push these thermal pastes and put them to the test. The testing scenarios are going to be using OCCT using their AVX2 instruction set extreme test, and that's going to be running for three minutes. I'm going to be using Prime95 and running that on a thermal load small FFTs for three minutes. I'm using Cinebench R23 on a 10 minute run. I'm going to be using the CPU system idle, and I'm also going to be leaving Cyberpunk 2077 open and running for three minutes. So to keep these tests consistent, I'm putting the thermal paste on the system, running the tests in the same order, keeping the room temperature at the same ambient temperature levels, and trying to maintain the same environmental scenario for each of the tests. For each of the tests, I'm allowing the CPU to idle down to uh, 30 and a half degrees, which is kind of the idle temperature uh, in the OS when it's just sitting doing nothing. And once it reaches that point, I'm bumping it up and running the next test. So I'm trying to be very consistent so that I can keep the test results as close as possible. So our first test is with the Noctua NTH1. In Cinebench R23, this, after a 10 minute run, the max CPU temperature that we reached was 77.3 degrees. The Arctic MX4 compound was as high as 83 and a half degrees. The Arctic MX5 came in at 79.3 degrees, which was an improvement over the Arctic MX4. The Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut came in at 76 and a half degrees Celsius. The Thermalrite TFX came in at 76.3 degrees, which as far as I'm concerned is within margin of error when it comes to the testing methodology, unless you have a completely environmentally controlled room. The next test, which is OCCT, saw the Noctua NTH1 seeing 73.8 degrees Celsius. The Arctic MX4 hit 78.5 Celsius, and the Arctic MX5 hit 75.5 Celsius. Once again, the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut came in at 73.3 degrees, followed very closely by the Thermal Right TFX, which came in at 73.8 degrees. So we can kind of see that the thermal load and the thermal capability of the thermal paste is really dependent on the load as well. In Prime 95, we saw the Nectua NTH1 coming in at 74 degrees Celsius. The Arctic MX4 came in at 80 and a half degrees. The Arctic MX5 came in at 75.3. Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut came in at 71.4 degrees. And the Thermal Right TFX came in at 71.5 degrees. Once again, placing the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and the Thermal Right TFX squarely head to head. The next test that I did was Cyberpunk 2077. And I literally just let it load from a save file and idle for three minutes. The Noctua NTH1 came in at 74 degrees Celsius. The Arctic MX4 came in at 79.3 degrees Celsius, and the Arctic MX5 came in at 75.8 degrees Celsius. Again, we've got our two top contenders, the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut coming in at 73 degrees, and the Thermal Right TFX coming in at 72 and a half degrees. Now, half a degree isn't that much, and as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much within margin of error. That being said, the Thermal Right TFX is definitely on par with the Cryonaut. 
When it came to installing, the Noctua NTH1 was really easy to install. It wasn't too sticky and it smoothed out very, very easily. The Arctic MX4 is always easy to install. It's a lot more liquidy than some of the other compounds and so it does spread a lot easier. The Arctic MX5 is a little bit thicker and a little stickier than the MX4, but it is still just as easy to install. The Thermalrite TFX is actually a little bit harder to spread than the other compounds and I've actually had to use a heat gun depending on the tube of compound to spread it out. So there is some inconsistency between the formulas. Some are easy to spread, some are not easy to spread. The Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut is really gummy, but it is actually pretty easy to spread when compared to the TFX. That being said, I did run into a problem with the Cryonaut. Cryonaut was the only thermal compound that pulled the CPU directly out of the socket. I preheated it, I, I twisted it, and it still pulled the CPU right out of the socket. And from what I can tell, the Cryonaut creates a lot of suction on the socket, so it kind of uh, sticks or creates kind of like a layer of suction where it really adheres to the CPU and to the heatsink. So in my experience, if I'm using an AM4 socket, I'm going to be a little bit hesitant to use Cryonaut on that. That being said, Cryonaut is a top performer. It spreads really easily and it gives you the results you're looking for. One thing that was consistent between all the thermal pastes was that at idle, I saw about 30 and a half degrees Celsius, and that remained rather consistent. Although I did see the thermal right TFX dip down to 29 and a half, and I didn't see that behavior with any of the other thermal compounds. So if you want to get the best performance for cooling out of your components, the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut or the Thermal Right TFX are probably some of your best choices. Now that being said, you know, can you still use an Arctic MX4 or an Arctic MX5? Yeah, you absolutely can. But when you're water cooling, these things are even more important to have the right thermal pastes. And the proof of that is when I was water cooling using the MX4 compound, my CPU was hitting about 65 degrees Celsius. When I moved over to Thermal Right TFX, my CPU temperatures dropped to 56 degrees Celsius. So a nine degree temperature difference between something like an MX4 and a Thermal Right TFX or a Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. When water cooling my GPU, I saw even greater temperature differences, switching from Arctic MX4, which was running at about 60 degrees Celsius on my GPU, and switching over to the Thermal Right TFX, which dropped the temperatures down to about 44 degrees Celsius. Now, you're gonna get the same performance out of Cryonaut. Now, I really wanted to find out which thermal compound is the best. What is number one? And I don't see Thermal Right TFX on a lot of lists. There's a ton of like 2021 best thermal compounds lists, reviewers, blogs, websites, and almost none of them mention Thermal Right TFX. So in the search for finding the best non-conductive thermal paste available today, I'm sitting with the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and the Thermal Right TFX. And I'm gonna put both of these at the same tier and say, these are your top two choices. Well, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you wanna see more content, like, subscribe, and hit that bell.